in working papers, we have structures under the engagement menu. So if I select engagement and structures, it takes me into the structure setup screen. Now the structures command is used to create financial statement categories in trial balance, lead sheet, and analytical review documents. Examples of such categories include current assets, prepaid expenses, and equity. For each category, the automatic documents generate normally displaying and accumulating accounts that belong to the specific category. Subtotal lines are provided for each category as well as a total line for all categories of the same type. For example, assets, liabilities, revenues, or expenses. In addition to providing subtotals and totals for each category, the structures command can also generate net income calculation and plain text lines. Now, as is normally done within working papers, you can still subgroup accounts by lead sheet or other grouping. Structures cannot be applied to analytical review documents or ratio analysis format or lead sheet grouping and trial balance documents with the detailed entries with totals format. Structures are not available for report order documents and rounding is not available for the structured trial balance documents. <clears throat> now let's have a peek first of all at a trial balance that does not have a structure applied to it. This is the trial balance document by account balances. So effectively it's just a list of accounts with their balances, etc. Now with a structure applied, this exact same document can look like this, where I've got a broken down with a balance sheet, assets, I've got subtotals for current assets, long-term assets, total assets, etc., and all the way down. It's the exact same document, I've just got a structure applied to it. Now in the past, some people have attempted to change the properties in the automatic document to get a better view. For example, they might go with account balances with group subtotals or something else. I'm going to click OK here. Now we have the group subtotals, which gives us the line items, but when you get down to the total current assets, you don't have ability to subtotal that without implementing structures. Okay, so back to my structure setup. To create structured automatic documents, the actual structure must first be defined. And as you can see here, up to three structures can be created. On the engagement menu, I selected the structures option, which brings up the structure definition browse. The structure definition browse is a series of lines that define how a structured automatic document will appear. Lines may be added, removed, or edited from this browse as is done with other browsers. Under the type column, we click the empty field and then click on the drop down arrow which would select a type from the following options. A section. A section is a collection of groups or accounts and the total of these grouped accounts will be output as part of the section. Text. Text allows the user to input text into a report. For example, balance sheet or assets or current assets might just be text that I would enter manually rather than uh, trying to do it in another fashion. Net income. This provides a net gain or loss amount which appears in the structure report. And finally we have total which provides a total of section lines that appear before the specific line. Now to do this we fill in the ID, name, calculation, and formatting details if applicable for the type that we have chosen. For a section an ID is mandatory because we're going to use the section ID as part of the total in the calculation for the total. The name for all of these items is mandatory, section description, text, net income loss, and total descriptions, and we will just type in whatever description we want to apply on that particular line. The calculation for a section specifies the group of accounts to appear in the section. For example, schedule A, B, C, D, L where schedule is in this case the lead sheet. If I click on that, I can type it in directly, but an easier way to do this is to use the section setup dialog, which allows me to choose which group that I want to base my section on. And that can be group one through 10, as well as map number. And then just check off the items that I want included in that particular section. Any accounts associated with the grouping will then be included. Here I have an extra one E that wasn't assigned, so I can just check that. And when I click OK, it brings it into the calculation for me. And we also have formatting. 
Under formatting, we have the option of no underline, a single underline, or a double underline for that particular area. Now, this may seem a little vague yet, but we're going to build something, and it's going to look pretty good when we're done. On the text side, an ID is uh, not mandatory. However, again, the description is there is no calculation for it, and we do have formatting available to us for text. For net income, we must have an ID associated with the net income in the event that we need to total it a little bit later. The name is mandatory because it does appear on the report. There's no calculation requirement here. It's not applicable. And again, the underlying formatting. And finally, the fourth type is a total. Now, the ID in a total is optional. It can be used for subsequent total calculations if necessary. Or if you're not going to be totaling a total into a grand total, then it wouldn't be necessary. The description is there. Now, the calculation for a total is slightly different than the calculation for a setting section. If I click on the three dotted button at the end of the diagram, at the end of the calculation field, you can see that I have the IDs from any of the lines that are above that particular total, and it allows me then to select them to total together. With the total, once again, the formatting, single underline, none or double underline. So now that we know what information goes into the columns, I'm going to work through creating a structure that can be later applied to automatic documents. Now I've got structure one empty over here, so I'm going to start off on this side. And I'm going to work through, so my first line is going to be text, and I'm going to throw an ID on each of these lines, just my personal preference, and call this one balance sheet. There's no calculation, and I'll leave single underline on there. For my second area, that's also going to be text, and this is going to be my assets section. Now I am nesting my IDs, that's a, again a personal preference, and then I want a section. Under assets, I have current assets, and at this point I need to define what the current assets are. So again I click on that three dot button at the end of the calculation field and select those groups that are going to make up my current assets, and I am using a lead sheet for my example here. I'll click OK. That's going to end with a single underline, moving me down to the next line, which will be long-term assets, another section. And I'm not going to worry that I put the hyphen in the wrong spot. Everybody can see that. Okay. So moving on to the calculation, once again, I've got my long-term. Now we can see that these items have been assigned to a section already, and I have my long-term items that I'd like to assign. Now click OK there. Another section. How about some restricted items? So I've got my restricted assets. Now it turns out I don't really have any groupings for restricted assets. But I'm going to leave that in there because I might add those groups later. And finally, I might have some other assets. And with my other assets, I have Schedule W and Schedule Y there for intangibles and whatnot, and I'll click OK. And we'll bring it to a total, uh, just click on the drop down, and in my total, I'm going to go 0.99.99. Now that's just me creating a, a large total here, and for my total, I'm just going to call this Total Assets. And because it's a total, I need to build a total based on the IDs that I supplied earlier. My total assets are going to include current, long -term, term, restricted, and other assets. And I'm going to put a double underline under my total assets. And at that point, I've got my assets section. Now I'm going to continue through building this. And as it's being built, what will happen is we'll end up with a completed structure. Now I've already done this in structure two, but I wanted to take you through the first section at least before I took you over to structure two. So here you can see I've added liabilities and equity. My liabilities section starts with a prefix of zero two to get my to my total liabilities. Then I've got my equity, retained earnings, net income, total equity, and the various items that are associated with that. And finally total liabilities and equity. So this structure when applied to, uh, well, if we look at this, 
that one's already got it applied. So when applied to the trial balance account balances document will provide me with a listing of accounts based on their breakdown. Now these accounts make up our, our total by lead sheet. So instead of going at the account level, what I could do, and I've already got it set up in the document manager, is I could go uh, with the group subtotals here. Opening that up, it now gives me group subtotals. And of course, when we have subtotals like this, we can collapse our groups. So now I've got my line items that I would expect to see on a final financial statement, the sections that I'm dealing with, and the totals. And if I scroll down just a little bit here, we can see that if I've got this properly set up, uh, so the 81,000 and the 475, 676, 38, do balance with the total liabilities and equity for me. So everything comes into play here, which is rather nice. So the advantage of having the structures is that we can put in those subtotals that would not otherwise be available. So once defined, a structure may be used for any trial balance, lead sheet, or analytical review document with the following exceptions. In the analytical review, we cannot do a ratio analysis document. In the lychee grouping, we can't do detailed entries with totals, but we have these five items available to us. And in the trial balance, also, we cannot do detailed entries with totals, but we do have these seven items available to us in the trial balance to apply structures to. In addition, this feature is not available for report order type documents. 